Um, so I'll get started. Um, hey everyone, um, my name is Shola. Um, I'm gonna be talking about scaling laws for transformer architecture variants. Um, and so today's talk is gonna be broken down into three main sections. Um, first, a discussion of the problem um, and context behind pursuing this research, an overview of the research and any findings from the experiments, as well as an overview of sort of future opportunities um, available for research on this topic. Um, at first, um, we're going to dive into the problem statement behind this research and project, um, specifically um, research that's already been done in this space. And uh, to provide context on this research project, um, I wanted to, sorry about that. Um, specifically, I want to chat about research that's already been done in the space to provide context on sort of this research project. Um, so scaling laws for neural language models was a recent paper that came out of OpenAI. Um, I imagine that most people in this room are familiar with this research, so I'll try to keep my comments brief. Um, this paper introduced empirical um, scaling laws for the performance of machine learning models as a function of a number of key parameters um, or key attributes, model size, which is defined by the number of model parameters, data set size, and compute. Um, compute referring to the total compute budget used to train the model. Um, as defined in the paper, compute, um, compute is referred as the number of non-embedding compute used during training um, can be estimated as C equals six MPS, where B is the batch size, S is the number of parameter updates, and <clears throat> the factor six accounts for the forward and backwards passes. Um, so the graph to the left is um, from the original paper and illustrates how language modeling performance increases. So it improves smoothly as we increase model size and data set size and compute um, with optimal performance gain when all three are sort of scaled in tandem. Um, and sort of given that LFC is its own function for every model, um, I consider lines that were within 5% of each other to be within a margin of uncertainty. Um, so the further away LFC was, sort of the more significant I consider the results. Um, and LFC can be calculated um, with irreducible loss or without, uh, but in my experiments, um, I exclusively calculated it without for simplicity. Um, it should be noted that, uh, so this is LFC, um, the equation that sort of represents this power line here. Um, and this M term here is sort of the constant term that controls the trade-off between um, loss and compute. Um, if you see me looking off to my right, I'm looking at my monitor um, to make sure sort of I'm pointing at the right thing. Um, so this is the existing research work um, that led to my research um, project. Um, while the original paper studies scaling laws on decoder-only transformers, I wanted to understand how these laws trend among different transformer architectures. Um, so before we get into um, more background, let's talk about motivation. Um, so I was interested in working with transformers because of their impact on the NLP space. Um, when you add scaling laws, which introduce the ability to forecast loss with respect to compute, um, I was curious to know how these laws could generalize among the different types of tra transformer architectures. Um, I was also curious to explore the constraints of scaling laws. Um, and I thought trying to reproduce scaling laws, um, but on different types of architectures or different types of transformers could tell us more about what generalizes among the, the different algorithms um, versus being sort of a standalone feature of the original decoder only transformer. Um, so at best, it would be an opportunity to understand the connection between transformer architecture components and model performance. Um, at worst, it would be an opportunity to understand the constraints of scaling laws, particularly when exploring more models. Um, so I'll, I'll sort of discuss next the types of architectures I experimented on, why I chose them, the differences, and what I think we can expect from the resulting architectures. Um, so the transformer architectures I studied fall into two categories, um, causal language modeling, uh, which is predicting the next token in the sequence, and mass language modeling, um, which refers to um, predicting the mass word, which may be any word within the sentence. Um, so the only difference between the two is the way that the model is trained. Um, so the same architecture can be used for both types of language modeling, 
And you'll see later on in the presentation that um, I did this with BERT. Um, although BERT was originally released as a mass language model, um, there is a causal implementation of it. Um, and I ran my experiments on both types. Um, so a little bit of background, um, and I'll try to speed through this just because I know this is a lot of information. Um, but the architectures that I experiment with are shown here. Um, they were picked based on their architecture and ease of implementation. Um, so in the interest of time, I'll try to be brief and maybe just highlight some of the more important characteristics. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that in, that in the original scaling loss paper, it studied only on the decoder only transformer. Um, since the data set, the data set size and the machine that I use are all different from the original paper, I decided to experiment on a transformer that was similar to what was used in the original paper. Um, and for that, I used GPT-2 um, for that as it was the closest to what was in the original paper. And I thought it would be a good reference point to put the others in context. Um, as you'll see, the other two um, causal language models that I experiment with were Transformer XL and Reformer. Um, oops. Um, you'll also see that um, BERT, like I mentioned, um, was, was experimented on using its mass implementation, but then also its causal um, implementation as well. Um, and so, you know, BERT is a mass language model that uses random masking and um, next sentence prediction. Um, the only difference sort of between the two as far as the causal and the mass implementation is the way the model is trained, uh, meaning that the same architecture can be used for both types of modeling. Um, so I, I really wanna point that out just because it'll become important later in the presentation, but um, just wanted to call that out. And then of course, these last two um, mass language models, which are both um, sort of based off of, um, or both sort of similar and inspired by BERT, um, I'll just sort of skip that in the interest of time. Um, so my hypothesis um, is that the impact of transformer architecture on scaling laws depends on how significantly that architecture impacts model size, data set size, and, and most likely compute. Um, so given reformers focus on reducing its memory and compute uh, during training that's embedded in its architecture, my prediction was that, that you would see that the reformer architecture particularly outperformed the other models. Um, given the insight on um, the original paper on how weekly performance trends with model shape, um, I predicted that BERT scaling laws would have little to no change between the causal and the mass version. Um, and that you would see the, all of the mass language models sort of have scaling laws that are within a sort of a margin of uncertainty or sort of um, have only the difference of a constant prefactor within them. Um, so next I wanna talk about experiments. Um, methodology, preliminary findings, and research implementations. I'm gonna try and speak a little bit faster because I think I'm running a little bit slower on time. Um, so for method methodology, um, one of the key tasks of my research project was calculating um, the compute efficient frontier fit, that's LFC, um, and on transformer architectures doing language modeling, um, and essentially trying to understand how LFC changes with respect to algorithm changes within an architectural family. Um, so once I decided which models to study, I proposed several model sizes and then produce a learning curve for each run. Um, ideally training at least four to five sizes for every model um, and sort of the number of parameters ranging between 2 million and 350 million um, with some variation between the different, um, the different architecture. Um, this graph highlights sort of a, one of the typical loss versus estimated compute. Um, and here I just want to point out that we sort of see this front formation of a Pareto frontier. Um, and this sort of, I would say, line that's adjacent to this curve is the scaling law um, that I'm going to be looking for and then sort of evaluating between the models. Um, so uh, these are some of the preliminary findings um, that I had. Um, I think the numbers are less important, but more so just the relationship between one another. Um, so on this slide, we can see that the same architecture using a different method of training um, can produce different LFCs. Um, so this result was um, initially surprising because I had assumed that the same, that we'd see the same LFC um, because they had the same architecture. 
Um, but it actually makes sense conceptually once you consider that the same architecture when trained differently processes data differently. Um, so in the case of BERT, when it's trained as a mass language model, the context is encoded bidirectionally. Um, so you have sort of semantic information on the left and the right, as such is the case when you are, um, when you are sort of decoding mass words, both um, anywhere sort of within a sentence versus in the causal implementation, um, you only ever see words to the left of the word that you're predicting. Um, and so that was pretty surprising in terms of um, the results. Um, another, another one that was pretty interesting was sort of um, reform reformed a sort of like tiered Pareto frontier, meaning that some of the larger, meaning that some of the larger models uh, don't perform any better than the smallest within the same tier, um, but they do use more compute. Um, so essentially these models would be sort of needlessly more expensive um, when you could just use this one. Um, so that I thought was um, pretty interesting. Um, Reformer did have sort of one of the best LOCs of the models I tested. Um, I think particularly with Reformer, I would want to sort of see how this pattern persists with some of the other architectures and to sort of see if this is a pattern that you can find with all of the transformers that, all of the transformers whose architecture directly impacts compute. Um, so that may be like the evolved transformer um, versus just reformer. Um, so some of the limitations I had, um, I did limited hyperparameter sweeps. Um, some of the problems that I, that I found could have been solved with that. Um, really calculating scaling laws with irreducible loss um, could have made the, the fits more precise, um, which could have revealed additional information. Um, the other piece is that like the nature of this research in general is that some of the comparisons are just simply apples to oranges and that there are way too sort of variations within the two different architectures. Um, and so I think the next time I would really want to, to figure out a way to isolate um, as much of the differences as possible, so you know what in particular is driving the changes in LFC. Um, and last, sort of why it matters. Um, so uh, the architecture that scales best is the most cost-effective model to use. Um, this is why this research matters, um, because it allows us to find the architecture, um, to find that architecture and potentially use our findings to understand what future architectures could look like that continue to optimize cost. Um, as we can see over time, the gap widens in terms of um, the gap widens in terms of um, the the gap widens in terms of um, model perform the model performance you receive um, for the same amount of compute. Um, and if the slope is steep enough, an architecture can consistently begin to outpace other architectures within the expected range of compute. Um, so this sort of matters because um, currently we're seeing ever increasing amounts of cute, uh, compute being used in the industry. Um, these scaling laws um, allow, for up to, allow for us to optimize large compute re regimes um, and choose the best architecture and model size that helps reach this aim. Um, in my experiments, the reformer model was that architecture that, pro that produced the best power laws in comparison to the others. Um, the reformer model was designed to be an efficient transformer and utilizes several techniques to reduce memory footprint and compute time. Um, I think this directly, um, I think this direct impact on compute time is likely why we see such improved performance with reformer. Um, it was the only transformer architecture I experimented with that had this property, but in my next experiments, I'd like to explain, expand the architectures I consider to similar styles of transformers. Um, and so what's next for me is really just continuing this study, um, doing more hyperparametering to any, um, expanding the list of, of models that I'm using, um, and really just expanding the experiment suite um, to be able to more exhaustively um, draw correlations and draw insights as far as um, the connection between model performance and compute with respect to transformer architecture. Um, and last but not least, lastly, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I think it's been an amazing time at OpenAI. It's been an incredible opportunity. Um, I really wanted to say a special thank you to my mentors, A. Ray and Nick, and really thankful that I've been able to have two.
Um, everyone else at OpenAI, Mariah, Christina, Pamela, Kath, um, Kathy, Alethea. Um, and I also wanted to say um, special thanks to the tools um, that helped made my research possible. Um, it would not have been possible to do this um, without open source tools like Hugging Face, Deep Speed, and Azure. Um, and I think I might be um, out of time. So we'll see what, um, what Francis says. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, if not, we'll see what happens with respect to time. Yeah, you can take one question. OK. Um, do we have any questions? Um, OK. So I see a question here that said, any intuition as to the tier structure of the, of the reformer? Um, I don't think so. I think that. So I think my only hypothesis would be that um, because sort of the reformers differences, because the reformers differences are sort of related to using tricks to specifically reduce memory and compute, um, my thought is that the hyperparameters matter a bit more with ref reformers specifically. That might not necessarily be the case with BERT and Transformer Excel and any of the others. Um, so I couldn't isolate which one specifically that was sort of driving that change, but that's sort of my thoughts behind it. 